gentlemen, Annenberg students and parents, may I have your attention, please? Uh, would you please tell that lady to stop talking? Everybody sit down. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Ernest Wilson. I'm the Dean of the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. Thank you. I would like to begin very seriously by singing the theme to Star Trek and other science fiction. I think Will did that. By the way, you know, Will Farrell is a graduate of the predecessor to our school. Um, on behalf of the faculty and staff, thank all of you, especially the parents and friends and guests, for joining us on this very special day. I would like to begin by acknowledging some very special guests. We are honored to have with us USC trustee Ronald Tudor. If we could give him a round of And we are very grateful to have USC Annenberg Board of Counselors member Louise Bryson here with us today. Where's Louise? <laughs> Probably on her way. So I want to uh, take this opportunity to say that just like you, the wonderful class of 2017, and first of all, let's start with the important thing and give a big round of applause to the class of 2017. I am told you are the best class ever, so that's not a surprise. So like you, I am preparing to enter a new phase of my own life. I will be stepping down after a decade of being dean. Um, and I suspect, like many of you in this tent, I am getting a little nostalgic. What, ha what does it mean to have been here for four years, or in case of PhDs, even longer? But I think nostalgia is good, but we shouldn't use it just to look at the past. So I'm, I want to talk a little bit about nostalgia looking forward and suggest some things that you might want to consider when you get your new gigs. And by the way, I'm, I'm going to say this a couple of times, especially for the parents, as you think about your new jobs, the percentage of students who get a job within 12 months of graduating is what? Anybody have a guess? What percentage of you will have jobs within 12 months of graduating? This is especially for the parents, 96%. 96%. So, basically chill, don't get too nervous. Um, so I, I wanted to reflect a bit on my own tenure as dean and share some ideas. And so I went back and looked in my uh, diary. So I've been keeping a diary ever since I was in high school. So I have a lot of entries about George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Uh, in my high school diaries. And so I went back to look and said, whatever possessed me to leave my hometown of Washington, D.C., where I was living, and think about moving to La La Land. So I went back and looked at the notes that I wrote at that time. So I want to share those with you. And some of these ideas you will have heard at, on the larger stage. So before you take a job, please ask yourself four questions. Not just your first job, but your second and third and your fifth job. Question number one, is the work important? Question number two, is it with people that you like? Or are they jerks? So is it with people that you like? Thirdly, does the job give you the resources you need to be successful and then finally, is the work fun? So all four of those things 
are really important. So speaking personally, just very briefly, uh, at my own decade here at Annenberg, I've been extraordinarily lucky because each one of those criteria I have been able to satisfy. It's been fun, important work, wonderful people to work with, um, and the work is important. So let me start off. Now, but however, you will have some days where all of those things will not be true. You may have some jobs where all of those things will not be true. And you may even start off your first couple of gigs working on stuff that's unimportant, with people you don't like, for no money, and it's not fun. But that comes with the territory. That really comes with the territory. So let's just walk very, very quickly uh, through, some of, through the four questions. Question number one, if you're going to work eight hours a day or 10 hours a day or longer, try to make sure that in your heart of hearts, you believe that you are doing important work. Are you working to save the planet? Are you doing something to help gender equality? Are you working toward peace in the world? And if you can find that importance, then that makes a big difference in your life moving forward. It can also be professionally important. Are you working with people who can advance your career? That's also good. More important than that, are you working to help your family do important things? And you need to make, I would suggest, these choices. But the truth of the matter is, if you look at what is happening in the world today, with real news and fake news, false news and lies, communication is really at the center. And the work that you have been doing will allow you to be at the center of important work. So keep that very much in mind. You've been trained and educated to do important things. And as an ad a graduate of the Annenberg School, we're confident you'll be able to do that. Secondly, and this is really important, are you working with people you like? So before you sign that on the bottom line, try to get a sense of whether or not you're working with nice people or, or jerks. Uh, you should follow, if possible, the no jerk line, which is you don't want to work in a place that's got a lot of people like that. Uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, the French philosopher, said that hell is other people. Hell is other people. But the good news is that heaven is other people as well. So if you can develop personal relationships, people you like to work with, who are sympathetic, who will listen to you, that's another great thing to consider. Um, the third point is, do they have the resources to help you do what you need to do to grow, to be successful? Uh, that's what they told me when I came to the Annenberg School. They said, you'll uh, need resources, you'll need money. And I said, okay, that's great. Uh, what they didn't say is I had to go out and raise it myself, but that worked out. We hit our numbers. We got a brand new building. Um, but I would suggest to you that money is important, but more important than money is are you given the time and freedom to do what you want to do with your new job? So it's not resources or not just money, and it's also the Trojan family, perhaps the most important resource that you could ever hope to have. Um, then we come to the question of fun. So we've talked about, is the work important? We've said, are you working with good people, um, doing important things with the resources that you need? But it should be fun. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance or the misfortune to meet people who say, I haven't had a vacation in 10 years. I'm going to wait for my vacation for another five years. And I would simply urge you is don't wait to have fun, to have joy in your life. That is as important as the other elements, and it will stand you in good stead as you move forward 
through your careers and through your personal life. As you get older, these four attributes, these four things uh, will get easier to do. And because you've had such an amazing education here, such an amazing opportunity to meet fellows who are going to be beside you moving forward uh, in the world, women and men, then you're well placed to do important work with people you like, with the resources that you need, and try to have a little fun along the way. With that, I want to again congratulate each and every one of you. Uh, I especially want to congratulate the members of your family. I think Sarah, you're going to ask, her, ask them to stand, but I do personally want to say that this really is the best class, 2017. And we look forward to the great stuff you're doing. Keep going and fight on. Fight on. I would now like to um, introduce a very dear friend, a very dear colleague, one of the most uh, accomplished scholars uh, in the field of communication. And by the way, I just have to say, we were recently rated for the third year in a row as the very best communication and media school in the world. In the world. So with that, Sarah Benet Weiser. Hi, everyone. I want to make sure it's clear that I am the reason that we're rated number one for three years in a row. It's really just about me. Uh, before I uh, introduce some of the graduates, I would like us all to thank Dean Ernie Wilson once again for his tremendous leadership over the past decade at the Annenberg School. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you, all the families, all the graduates to this commencement ceremony. And I want to start off by asking the graduates from each uh, degree program to stand. So the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy at Annenberg. The candidates for the degree for Masters in Public Diplomacy, please stand. Right there, folks, there are your future diplomats, right there. Candidates for the degree of Masters in Global Communication. The candidates for the degree of Masters in Communication Management. Candidates for the degree of Masters in Digital and Social Media. I really do appreciate the spirit of competition here, but I think you're all going to lose as the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts in Communication. Please stand. Before I say a few remarks, I would like every, all of the graduates today to please stand once again and turn to your family, your loved ones, your partners, everyone who has supported you throughout this journey and thank them. Finally, I would like us to recognize the amazing faculty at Annenberg, those who have supported you. A 
Okay. So I've been a professor at Annenberg for, this is my 18th year. And over the years, I've realized that at Annenberg, you really do receive the kind of education that grows with you. It helps you transform and adapt. It helps you imagine yourself. It helps you realize yourself. Our faculty are deeply invested in our students. Our faculty are top scholars and practitioners in our fields. We have amazing facilities here, as you all know. We have technology that is unparalleled at other universities that you have access to. And I could go on and on about this and talk about the fact that there, I really do believe that there's no better place to learn about the rich and varied ways we understand communicate, we learn to communicate as a method, a discipline, a way of life. I could tell you, like Ernie just did, that we have a remarkably high job, place and, uh, job placement for both graduate and undergraduate students. And I could tell you all this because it's true. I'm honored and I'm privileged to have brilliant, generous colleagues who are committed to fostering and maintaining a remarkable intellectual community, one that is sustaining and sustaining over years. I'm honored and privileged to work with incredible staff at Annenberg, because if you think this little shindig is easy to put on, it's not, right? The staff at Annenberg are unparalleled. And every day, every day, they make this place a place where that intellectual community can flourish. And telling you all this, I think, is probably very reassuring to not only you, but to parents and loved ones. This is an expensive place, right? Um, so we'd like to know that, you know, we're doing whatever we can to make sure you get your money's worth. But what I'd rather do, actually, for just a few minutes, is tell you about the privilege I have of teaching students at the Annenberg School. The largest, the most important part of the intellectual community here for me are you guys, all, all of you guys, you, the students. I teach in both the undergraduate and graduate programs, and though I teach, I'm constantly amazed at what I learn from students. You cons consistently challenge me, make me aware of new perspectives, keep me plugged in to popular culture, which is really important, because I often get it wrong. You sustain me as a professor. This is surely a unique time in the United States and in the world, politically and culturally. And while I think that a degree in communication has always been important, I mean, I got a couple of them several, many years ago, um, I have to say I don't think that there's ever been a time when it's been more important or more urgent to have chosen, to have made the choice to study communication. In a changing economic landscape, it's clear that centers of power are shifting. Media companies, technology companies are becoming more and more powerful. The skills that Annenberg students leave this school with, technological savvy, writing skills, public speaking skills, and most importantly, critical thinking, these are the skills that are most urgently needed in the world today. And it's also clear that this is a fraught time, a divided moment in many ways politically. And wherever you stand on the political spectrum, there seems to be one thing that all of us have in common. There's never been a more important moment to be critically aware, to be diligent about sources, to be diligent about how information is interpreted, and vigilant about retaining the crucial rights we have as citizens. Communication is crucial to all of these things. As Ernie said, in an era of fake news, of hacking, of social media as a platform for both personal life and politics, from Instagram to Twitter, uh, in an era of political activism, some of which we haven't seen for many years, both in the media and on the ground, it is ever more imperative to be equipped with the communication skills to navigate through these increasingly muddy waters. And I'm very proud of the spaces that Annenberg has made available to students this year to help with this navigation. We've really tried to work to provide structured and safe opportunities for students to talk about the, your differences in a respectful, civil manner. But I'm so much prouder 
of all of you, the students at Annenberg who take communication and civility seriously, who have worked so hard and in so many different ways to challenge dangerous assumptions and to ask difficult questions about what we are told is common sense. It is a moment to be brave and courageous, and brave and courageous defines Annenberg students. This is what I know our students are equipped with as they leave Annenberg and USC, the ability to look critically around them, to make decisions that are for, informed by good sense rather than common sense. After all, Annenberg students are not common. You are uncommon in the best possible way. Congratulations to the class of 2017. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our commencement, our commencement speaker, Maurizio Mota. Um, as you know, if you've read your program, or if you know him, or if you know his company, Maurizio is the co-founder and co-president of Wise Entertainment, along with his wife, Katie, who is sitting right there. And their, comp their company is dedicated to developing creating and producing TV content and film that capture the pulse of popular culture by women, for women, and underserved, underrepresented audiences. Together, they produce the Emmy-nominated East Los High, which is the first English language, language show with an all-Latino cast, uh, all-Latino cast creators and writers. The series premiered in Hulu in 2013 and now is in his, it, it, its fourth season. And I thought Maurizio would be a fantastic commencement speaker last this semester when he guest lectured in my class, Communication and Culture. <laughs> There's like one person from 206 here. Um, um, <laughs> uh, what I found so fascinating when Maurizio came to give a guest lecture is how he seizes transmedia storytelling as a real strategy for engaging diverse audiences as well as engaging the intricacies that are involved with weaving together things like education and entertainment. <clears throat> Maurizio and the Wise Entertainment team have purposely embedded thing, educational messages in East Los High in those narratives to help do things like promote sexual and reproductive health among teens. Not only was the show a 24-episode teen drama on Hulu, but it leveraged another nine digital platforms to roll out extended content from a high school newspaper, a character's vlogs, a, to dance tutorials, to comic strips. I think he's really, he and Katie and their company have been really instrumental in recognizing what diversity actually means on the ground, rather than as some old tired industry standard or some rhetoric that is just touted out all the time. With shows like East Los High, he has proven how transmedia can be truly used as a tool for real social impact with audiences. Please join me in welcoming Maurizio Mota. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Some hangovers today or no? All good? <laughs> Just asking. I know your parents are here, so you can't skip that answer. OK, guys, I'm going to start here. Um, I'm very happy to be here today for many reasons. I'm going to explain that why. Um, well, uh, we say also, bom dia in Brazil. So. Um, this is a great day to celebrate such an important rite of passage after four years of learning, studying, and enjoying the best communication school in the world. And I just found out that this university has the largest percentage of international students in the country. Which basically means what America is, right? That's what America is. And isn't that crazy? Because after this morning, we will all proudly go to your LinkedIn profiles to write that you graduated from the USC Annenberg School of Communication. And don't forget, please, while you update your LinkedIn page, to also check your Facebook, Twitter, Snap profiles for all those moments you really don't want your parents, coworkers, future bosses, and partners to find out about. Because as you know, everything you say, write, publish, is your legacy, is your personal brand, and is your reputation. And talking about reputation, I wanted to uh, humbly thank three people whose reputations 
represent the richness, the diversity, and the forward-thinking soul of this school. Dean Wilson, Sarah Bennett Weiser, the director of the School of Communication, and Willow Bay, future dean of the school. And a special thanks to Henry Jenkins, who couldn't be here with us today for health reasons, who I consider my Yoda, and who actually introduced me to Edinburgh. I went to one of the best communication schools in Brazil, but because I got it in on when I was really young, 16, and I had to work, I feel like all these years of building projects and participating actively at Edinburgh has become my opportunity to actually feel like a student, like all of you. I feel honored to be here today as a communicator, as an activist, but also as an, an immigrant who considers the U.S. his home. Three things that nowadays are blessings and burdens. Being invited to speak to all of you is beyond personal to me. I can feel all my African, Brazilian, Spanish, Danish, and Jewish ancestors looking at me right now baffled at what their journeys, scars, victories, and losses led to. Become your ancestors' widest dreams. I read one day on a shirt, and that made me smile. So I want to ask all of you, your friends, your families, and your faculty, to give yourselves a loud round of applause for becoming your ancestors' wildest dreams. We are going right now um, through weird and cloudy times where ancestry, orig origin, and last but not least, communication are clashing in a very divided world, like Sarah said earlier. Being a good communicator is to me the most important skill and profession for the age we live in now. Because as someone once said, communication is 50% what you say and 50% what the other person understands. And that is critical in such divisive times. I want to share three stories about why communication is the most important gift of, gift of all. It can be a weapon that kills and resurrects, a solution that pays bills and creates jobs, or a new model that can turn Hollywood upside down. I'm the fourth generation of a family of storytellers, which is just a fancy name for good communicators. My great-grandfather owned a newspaper where the whole family worked. Nelson, my grandfather, he started working for, for him when he was 13. Uh, our, maybe it's like, considered like, sort of like child labor, but back then it was okay, it looks like. <laughs> a certain week, the newspaper published a story that destroyed a woman's reputation. That same week, the same woman came to the newspaper looking for Mario, my great-grandfather. He's not here, someone said, but Roberto, one of his sons, is. One of his sons is at his desk. The woman crossed the newsroom and went to the publisher's office. There was Roberto, already considered one of the most important illustrators in Latin America. She, was laid, uh, she killed him right there. She shot him, two shots on his, on his chest. She was re later released for defending her honor. Mario, my great-grandfather, died months later with the burden of guilt. Those deaths caused by the abu abuse of the power of communication was a constant shadow over my grandfather's head. And that tra tragedy, tragedy also became fuel that helped him write 67 novels, plays, short stories, and books. During the dark ages of dictatorship and censorship in Brazil, he created stories that not only reinvented playwriting in Latin America, but also portrayed the first interracial couple, the first lesbian character, and in numerous strong and powerful women who didn't want men and institutions telling them what to do with their bodies and their choices. <laughs> Which probably nowadays, he would be called uh, evil anti-family values, snowflake of color communicator, right? <laughs> But he denied the status quo rules of what he should write, create, or communicate. He understood that the untold stories who come from the unheard voices, genders, and colors that weren't seen in plays, TV shows, movies, and books needed to be told. He died without the praise he deserved, but now he's considered one of the biggest geniuses in the field and is lauded as the Shakespeare of Brazil. So that is my communication story to you about 
death and rebirth. My other story is about communication to pay the bills and create jobs. And I'm not talking about tweeting to pretend you're saving jobs. I'm talking about real jobs for real people, if you know what I, who I'm talking about. <laughs> and I put it here, wink, wink, so you guys got the joke. <laughs> and this story is for all of you, but especially for the graduates who plan to invest in, acad in an academic journey. During the late 90s, my mother had a very solid career in communications and writing, which basically mean it was very hard to make ends meet. She also, uh, and she was applying for her, for, she was also an academic and she was applying for her PhD. Back then I was a 14 year old uber nerd and loved Dangerous and Dragons and I suggested her to study role playing, game, role -playing game players all over Brazil. And the university almost crucified her for studying an American pop culture game played by nerds. It was very, very hard, not only because of the resistance from her peers, but because she had to create a new methodology to confirm her thesis. I became her research assistant, and those years for me were a very important lesson about the power of communication, innovation, and respecting your guts. Her thesis became the first in Latin America to examine role-playing games, and it proved that kids of any age, any color, any gender, any socioeconomic background who played games were better communicators than storytellers, advertisers, scriptwriters, and the same PADs that criticized my mom for studying them. And months later, when we were totally broke and selling lunch to buy dinner, like we say in Brazil, I turned her thesis into a storytelling board game that I sold door to door into slums, into public schools, and education conventions all over the country for, for two years. Now the game is present in 5,000 schools, and my communication hustle, because communicators are hustlers, and we need to understand that, helped my family through, through one of the worst financial situations of our lives, created jobs, and elevated how kids communicate. My last story is more recent and has deep connections not only to communication, but also the groundbreaking work Anna Berg has been doing around media, the future of content, and inclusion in Hollywood. In 2008, there was this woman named Katie who was vice president of communications and programming of a nonprofit in Vermont. She had spent many, many years implementing communication programs for social change in countries like Papua New Guinea, Ethiopia, Egypt, Jamaica, Mexico. She worked with the UN, foundations, brands, and media partners to design serialized dramas that would address in a power, in very powerful way the cultural and social issues that spoke to the zeitgeist of those countries. She wanted to develop and produce a TV show for young Latinos in the US, one of the most underserved audiences of the galaxy, through the combination of traditional television and new media. So let's pause a little bit here, guys. Let's recap. A young woman wanted to design a multi-platform TV show for young Latinas in the most white, male, linear, and non-diverse markets in the world. And that's where communication and delusion walk hand in hand, right? So while she was researching for her project, she interviewed Henry Jenkins, who probably taught many of you, who is, for me, the Pope of Transmedia Studies and Fan Culture. And through that connection, he recommended that she work with me, a crazy Latino guy from Brazil that sort of understood that world. Crazy white woman meets crazy brown man. <laughs> Sounds like a late night B movie that you see on HBO, but it ends well, holding there. So we designed a whole new methodology that involved organizations from all over the, the, the US at the city, state, and federal levels, as well as nonprofits, foundations, community leaders, and activists. Qualitative and quantitative data that we turn into story, we turn into marketing, we turn into communication tools, outreach, and also tools for writers, studios, and organizations. Not the same old news and demographics that keep treating all of us as stereotypes and boxes to check. One of the findings was that 53% of Latinas by the age of 20 had been pregnant at least once. That's more than one in two teen girls getting pregnant, and yet there were no stories in, in television talking about that reality. So why not create an edgy, sexy, layered, fun teen drama that tackled sexual and reproductive, reproductive health, right? Right? It's a little bit obvious, right? Nope, wrong. <laughs> yep, welcome to Hollywood, guys. 
We started presenting the East Los High show to studios, agents, big production companies, and they all would say, you guys are insane, crazy. No one will ever buy this show or watch it. The market is not ready for a show with an all Latino cast as protagonists. And I love this whole mumbo jumbo thing of the research you do, but you can go back to the drawing board and make something else. But our partners outside of Hollywood were saying we had something huge in our hands. Oh, someone got the huge joke, great. <laughs> and we should make that happen. And then we decided to produce a 60 minute pilot along with the whole social media, transmedia plan around it. And we sent it to some people around town. And then we got calls. Wow, we were crazy, you were right. Let's set a meeting, we're interested, we just have some creative, creative notes to give. They all said to us, and they were like super naive and excited going to the meetings in Hollywood. And one of the main creative notes was, we love this show, but can it be less Latino? <laughs> and after so many meetings like that, we decided to shoot 24 half hour episodes plus 10 hours of transmedia content ourselves with no buyer guaranteed, with no channel guaranteed. And we produced it on a shoestring with money raised from grants and donations outside of Hollywood, which by this town's rules is like the Armageddon. After that, we got multiple offers and I brought the show to Hulu, who back then understood we were developing a new audience, a new public. And two weeks after its launch, we beat Grey's Anatomy on their platform. <laughs> East Los High, is Hulu's longest running drama and was one of the first streaming shows in US history and became a pioneer in diversity in front and behind the camera. And the crazy white lady, who's right there, <laughs> and the crazy brown man married and they made amazing blended boys. <laughs> and have an incredible company and team dedicated to creating and producing content for underserved audiences. So I wanted to send you off today with these three stories because what we need in the world is a new type of communicator who can conquer the challenges we're all facing. Ernie said that and Sarah said that, and it's very tangible, guys. You were communicators of the future four years ago, but now you're the communicators of the present, and we need, we need you to embrace a few things, okay? And it's really important because sending you off after today, everything is gonna change for you, so here are the, the things I want you guys to embrace. First of all, the future of communication is female and of blended colors. Let's just embrace it. And it will be about brands and institutions empowering women, people of color, and their narratives and their rights. It's better for culture, it's better for society, and families, and it's gonna bring a lot of money to everybody's table. The future of communication lives in the gray and not in the black or white of Republican or Democrat, rich or poor, coastal or heartland. The communicator who finds that right spot will thrive and bridge worlds. The future of communication is about also finding that balance between making money and paying bills while creating new markets that allow new audiences to grow and thrive. Because as Norman Lear said to Katie and I last week, the other person is just another version of you. It's that simple. And it's time to be practical about it. So thank you so much, guys. I hope your, your future goes amazing. Thank you so much, Maurizio. Okay, you ready? Let's present some diplomas for you all. By the way, just so everybody knows, we got a whole bunch of photographers around here. So try, please don't block the aisles or anything. We're taking pictures. You're gonna get a bunch of different opportunities as you come up. Um, we're going to begin with the presentation of the Doctor of Philosophy degree. The Director of Graduate Studies, Professor Peter Manji, will present these diplomas. Janine Anderson.
Kristen Guth. Next, we have the master's degree in public diplomacy. The director of the master's in public, public diplomacy, Professor Nick Cole, will present the diplomas. Katie Kelly. Michael Arda Karakash. Sergio Luis de la Que Bido. Amanda Lester. Nicholas Caltu. Bai Zhao Lin. Yesenea Vargas. Caroline Emmert. Un Jong Yong. Avin Shai Kosman. Lahant Stayush. Maria Latouf Atbi Admi. <laughs> Jihi Shin. <laughs> Jillian Haggadis. Brett Schaefer. Lacey Sepanik. Jamal Abdul Birkat. Sydney Klein. Alan Lowe Williams the second. Next, next, we have the master's degree in global communication. This is a truly unique program, a dual joint master's program with the London School of Economics. And the directors of those programs, Professor Patty Riley and Professor Terry Rentanen from the London School of Economics will present the degree. Alex Forbes, For Forbes.
Jeanette Flores. Sarah Jacob. John New. Teo Leo Noir. Pietro Greppi. Wong Tu Wu. <laughs> Ying Yang. <laughs> Tie Tuong Ho. Min Guo. Carissa Tojo. Lee Tu Lu. Andrea Villalos Moreno. <laughs> Julian Yap. <laughs> Bettina Kinley. David Otufe. <laughs> Maria Feli. <laughs> Hyun Jin So. Casey Costello. Elise <laughs> Yazdani. Shi <laughs> Cho Cho Chio. Yifan Song. <laughs> Yiling Lu. <laughs> Shu Tong Wang. Wang. Jingbo Dong.
Yu Wong. Melanie Brusalian. <laughs> Sonali Lodia. Kate June. Navdeep Hare. Sanchita Sivaranman. Shari Sharp Stevens. Okay, next we have the presentation of the master's degree in communication management. And, and first, first we have a really wonderful tradition here at USC where uh, parents of the board of counselors or, or faculty can present the degrees to their own students. So first, Louise Bryson, if you could please come up. <laughs> to present the degree. <laughs> she was here. <laughs> okay, first, Austin Roy, whose mother is Anne Framrose, a professor in communication ma management, will come to receive his degree. Louise Bryson from our Board of Counselors will present her degree, the degree to her daughter, Kathleen Louise Bryson. The director of the Communication Management Program, Professor Rebecca Weintraub, will present the diplomas. The, phenom the phenomenal Taylor Winchell. Bobby Kalker. <laughs> Jessica Stampy. <laughs> Diana Beas. <laughs> Don Berziki. Hiba Muhammad, Scott Bortman, Carlos Alexandra Cruz, Monica Raisin, Heaven Saunders. John Chen Chi Yuan. 
周思卓。Rushina Meta。Evelyn Saifula. Mahab Ilahi. Carolyn Robles. Hu Fangzhou. Zhang Yichuan. Zhao Xueting. Zhang Tianqi. Chen Nan. Wang Pulu. Huang Xiaxian. Lin Zhihui Jay Zubiri Kylie Robertson Christina Maria Rogers Courtney Lewis, <laughs> Sasha Hulahan, <laughs> Kaylee Tanya, <laughs> Henan Kim. Gu Yiming, Zhu Siyi, An Tian, Qian Yiru, Li Tianyue, Liu Yuquan, Zhang Xueting, Zhang Keqing. Li Yuanzhen, Du Yuanzhen, He Xuan, Li Ji, Li Junyi, Wang Xini, Ronnie Charlton, Rania Sali. Yon Choi, Antoinette Lim Huata, Denae Lawless, Stephen Howe.
，刘宇宁。魏思雨，杨佳琪，朱文慧，张扬。李思玉、Lenisha Roberts、Courtney Johnson、Brandon Amons。Nicole Mano, Amara Essa, Jarosad Ramirez, Elizabeth McRobian. Caitlin Padilla, Elisa Marie Rizzo, Victoria Solozano, Manfred Ahma, Stephanie Fong. Martin Joseph McKenna, Teresa Ho, Trevor Arvin, Carla Sandy Cruz, Tanya Madurosian. Ladan Abasi, Sun Yuqing, Angel Su, Zhou Yuhan. Zhou Manning, Xue Yuhui, Wang Xiaoyu, Han Murong. Paul Labish, Ethan Klein, Domini Desanyaka, Paul Santi. Frederick Pruse, Beta Salton, Zhu Ming, Li Hao Chiu. Yu Mengqiao. Xiao Liangwan. Yeah. 
จ้าริลิงจิงยี่ลิงวานิสซาเอลเวอร์เอสยาสมินยากานาฮาลามาฮุตรา Justina Shang, Hasha Banu, Mary Alert Portier, Danny Macarthur Finlay. Brittany Scanlon, Shaylee All, Joshua Fernando Ortiz, Cindy Noriega Ortiz, Chen Shuning. Wang Pei, Jiang Mengjue, Maritza Cannon, Marcos Garcia. Brian Hudson, Jason Tombury, Arulake Ashuru, Lizzie Wu, Sabrina Ajib. Yao Pai, Gianna Osorio, Lin Huan, An Zhu Hui. Yang Xiaoyu. Chen Yue, Li Xuanrei, Jennifer McMillan, Gianna Nicole. Kimberly Vandermos, <laughs> Kathleen Concialdi Stanton, <laughs> Derek Hills, <laughs> Eric Pastona. Alejandro Rodriguez, Sarah Price, Shelby Mallory, Zhang Yu, Chen Yuan Yuan, yeah. 
Cody Ueda. Liu Yixing. Joseph Patrick Fatia. John Marlins. Mark Posner. Tanya Size. Jennifer Michelson Eating. Christy Carney. Mitzi Morales Margos. Elizabeth Fenton. Karen Huynh. Shira Washington. Kaylee Winslow. Christina Anna Sveck. Haas Petrosian. <laughs> Elena Merzian. <laughs> Daniel Campana. <laughs> Angela Tang. Gabrielle Ellis Moultries. Karen Fight On Bowman. Rachel Malu. Elisa Stoker Andre. John Casey Clark Jr. Robin Lackington. Lilia Morales. Tia Nicole Diaz. <laughs> Layla Jasmine Kanpo. <laughs> Mana Salama. <laughs> Stuart Giotta. Xie Xiaoying. James Min. Crystal Walker Phipps. Elisha McMurty. Elsa Jakubowski. Catherine Kine. Michelle Gabato. Marilee Pattenen. Stacy Wong Rizzo, <laughs> Li Xingjian, <laughs> Tom 
Timothy Philemon Campos. Christina Marie Gibson. Yasmin Pazeshkwar. Jason Cruz. Sue Lee. Liu Qingxu. Elia Sanchez Gomez. Lindsay King. Christopher Castaneda. Jiang Xiang. Zhang Miao. Li Zhihui. Wang Jiaqi. The fantastic Wang Ge. <laughs> Courtney Jaco. Wu Xiaqing. Claire Kim. Joe Rockus, Ronaldo Garcia the third. <laughs> Beverly Zanders. <laughs> Umaro Jao. <laughs> Abila Argobao. Larissa Ann Leach. Li Qingling. Marcus Grimaldo. Jamie Lee. Philip Matthews. <laughs> Julia Hoopner. <laughs> Ilana Rabin. <laughs> Amy Mandelson. <laughs> Jamie Cohen. Zhu Yiqiong. Tang Tang. The fantastic Caroline Hu. Li Suying. Gao Wenqian. Jia Jai Singh. Divya Yara Mari. Daniela Smolovich. Alson Karchak. Camille Saucier. Zhou Shichen.
la chère Monique Rodriguez. Christian Frederick. Timothy David LeBlanc. Nicole Joan McLeod. Michelle Toba. Okay. Yep. And now to present the diplomas for their Master in Digital and Social Media, Professor Karen North. Alexandra Del Salto. Yes, Nea Rodriguez. Nicolette, goodbye. Gancha Nazarian, Irania. Nicole Marquez. Nicole Babacnia. <laughs> Kavia Joseph. Mark Christian Innocencio. Sasha Leilani Swordlow. Wei Song Wong. Zed James Santiago. You shine trough. And now for the presentation of diplomas for the undergraduate bachelor's degree in communication. The first, the diplomas will be presented by the director of undergraduate studies, Allison Trope. But the first, the first candidate, Bryn Ellen McFadden will receive a diploma from her father, Dr. Michael Mifadden, U.S. Keck School, UC, USC Keck School of Medicine. Brooke Bellinger. <laughs> Tiffany Chan. Karen Chung. Kayla Abels. Latoya Rodriguez Martin. Luis Hernandez. Melody Kincaid. Jacqueline Bilbo Luke. Matthew Sherman. Alexandra Minache. Gabriella Finn. Brittany Blocker. Vendela Agualo. Leia Shamuni. Alexandra Aftalion. Sa 
Samantha Doctrow. Andrea Yojin Lee. Avery Bivenito. Stephanie Alvarez. Shawnee, Sam Epstein, Jessica Choi, Roxanne Angel Berman, Jack Ross, Madison Kern, Zoe Young, Gabriella Rayblick, Lauren Barshamian. Maddie Carnow, Mackenzie Kennedy, Allie York, Lauren Beveridge, Lauren Botchen. Stephanie Ping Jing Chen. Wing Him Keith Wong. Crystal Wang. Caitlin Almada. Jensen Toner. Benish, Alyssa Beckner, Allegra Satode, Jackson Grover, Jenny Kim, Jose Benjamin Cisneros. Martinez, Dan Yuyuk Yochin, Holly Lu, Edward Lau, Megan Daly. Jessica Fisher, Haley Carter, Drew J. Boisal, Shelby Seaman, Emma Garth. Chelsea Spinos, Fung Now, Doyen 
and Kim. Evelyn Teresa Blanco. Malik Dorton. Jalen Green. Gabriella Cantrell. Victor Blackwell Jr. Zachary Burnley. Dion Hart. Lucy Zwang. Colette Garcia. Amy Sang. Claudia Howe. Shia, Shia, Shia. Ji Hang Shu. Gina Wang. David Shaw. Deandra Yotama. Brittany Lazar. Huang Suen. Goja Shingo. Skylar Tudor. Alexa Reardon. Samantha Johnson. Chandler Thomas. Annie Rowland. Jacqueline Bailey. Talia Fionn. Glassman, Sammy Fishbin, Kelsey Patch, Sandra Mercado, Christian Miyame. Jasmine Liu. You are Wang. Melody Kim. Alexis Orozco. Haley Fairman. Monica Raw, Kendall Ota, Yi Chu Dai, Remy Ozer, Cooper Perkins. Makawiki, Zachary Levin, Michelle Atuad, Shayna Daniel Zeta, Remington Green. 
Anderson Ferber. Andrew Ellenson. Steven Chima. Hannah Cruz. Shelby Matsumura. Emily Jang. Nicole Hurrip. Leah Mistral. Sophia Shervanian. Stella Kim. Candace Janae Brown. Jason Washington. Ariel Stromrich. Samantha Chiopa. Mariah Miller. Alexandra Macbeth. Elizabeth Yeager. Lauren Park. Christian John Bradley. Luke Broyles. Natalia Alves Taveras de Silva. Allison Brett. Brittany Bowie. Delaney Bounty. Laura Kay. Katie Hellman. John Mattia Landy. Wuni Cho. Greta Devoni. Sarafina Saleh. <laughs> Kelly Keenis. Amanda Armanini. <laughs> Teresa Pham. Andrew Dong. Alex Keener. <laughs> Ling Yi Fan. Sia Huang. Danielle Simpkins. Claudia Puccio. Justin Kamhai. <laughs> Taryn O'Grady. Elise Harvey. Sydney Morris. Yeah. 
Sophia Rendon. Samantha Harbert. Nicole Farage. Alexa Gorris. Howard Stephen Guy. Sophia Coons. Brianne Flores. Annabelle Meneghino. Ariel Sachs. Lindsay Kaplan. Allison Yoon. Sarah McMullen. Maggie Miller. Catherine Fullenwider. Elise Ruddens. Taylor Whittingham. Kelsey Kafka. Hannah De La Riva. Mary Kay Doherty. Leah O'Byrne. Kaylee Myers. Alexa Boyer. Kristen Day. Amelia Thomas. Michelle Brooks. Brooke Fry. Lena Yip. Eileen C. Lee. Gabriella Eisenberg. Jackson Harris. Rocco Signore. Lauren Tomhave. Ensa Choi. Catalina Gutierrez. Trevor Gutierrez. Sarah Sloan. Camille Cruz. Lucy Jingja Guo. Tessa Zeman. Ashley Kim. Isabel Chua. Emma Suffrage. Jessica Seifkees. Monica Hamilton. Caroline Langella. Maya Anderman. Nicole Kim.
Genevera Pacheco. Kate O. Fiona Lee. Miranda Hurst. Julia Rousseau. Christina Wilkes. Andrea Wijaya. Andrea Juarez. Patricia Roshin. Emma Diaz. Jonathan Tsao. Linda Liu. Patty Miller. Taylor Walsh. Tatia Pacey. Joel Foy. Cortland Leoy. Jennifer Brooke Fricky. Astrid Alberon. Beverly Sandoval. Grant Lee. Noel Berry. Michael Sharon. Zoe Sitterman. Petra Banuban. L. Max. Tiffany Hosseini. Omala Okpala. <laughs> Natasha Javeri. Caitlin Chen. <laughs> Sarah Reckenthaler. <laughs> Catherine Chule. Hunter Crowder. Allison Aman. Congratulations, class of 2017.